Hello and welcome to Cataclysm University. My name is Vormithrax and this is course number 13 where we'll be learning about the sight, sound, and smell systems that are in the game. These are the methods by which the enemies can detect you and start moving towards you, so it's important to understand the mechanics behind this. So the first one and the one primarily used by the enemies is the sight, and it's fairly obvious. If you can see them, a general rule is that they can probably see you. Now there is a limit regarding range. I found just through play that usually at about the 40 range is where they don't pay much attention to you. If they're more than 40 away, the general population of monsters will not know that you're there yet. When you get closer than that, that's when things start to get a little more interesting and you'll have to deal with things spotting you and coming towards you. So it's going to vary. A lot of the critters in the game, there's a very huge number of different monsters you can actually find and it will vary tremendously between the monsters. So it's not a hard and fast rule you can always rely on, but for general purposes with the average things that you'll encounter, that is going to be true. Now, a few things you can do. If they're on the outer edge of the mini-map, that's usually about far enough where they're not going to be able to see you. So you'll get a feel for it with a little bit of practice. Now as you move around inside the game world, like I move around inside this uh, survival shelter, you know that these are cones of light that I can actually see out the doors. So that's showing me as I move my shifting viewing angle. So knowing that and taking advantage of those cuts, kinds of things is fairly important. And I'll mention a few other things about positioning uh, just a little bit later. Um, but for the most part, like I said, if you get out in the open like this, if you can see them, they can see you. So how do you know whether or not something can spot you? Well, the primary way is to use the Shift V command. So this has two modes. There's a monsters mode as well as an items mode. Just use the tab key to move between them. And when it's set on monsters, it will list all of the things that you know about in your local area. And on the list, you're going to see the name of the item or the monster. And off to the right, you see how far away in what direction. So there's a rattlesnake, 47 spaces to my east. And Dominic Boyce, the NPC, is 17 spaces to my west. Now, this section here is also critically important. The exclamation point indicates whether that creature or person sees you or knows you're there. So Dominic Boyce knows where I'm at. He can see me and he is aware of my presence. So he has an exclamation point. He's also ignoring me. He's not hostile. Now the rattlesnake, 47 away, has no idea where I'm at. It can't see me and it's also ignoring me. As I close the distance to the rattlesnake, this will eventually change. He'll get an exclamation point, but I think he'll still say, stay neutral for the most part. So I'm gonna move towards him. And we now have a couple of zombies on the screen up to our northeast. So you can see here and here, there are two zombies. So let's check our list now and see who knows about us. So there's a smoker zombie, a rattlesnake, and a standard zombie. None of them can see us. None of them have the exclamation points. So they're not aware of our presence. Two of them are hostile, the two zombies, but the snake still doesn't care. So let's keep moving down this direction a little bit. And we'll see what changes. So the rattlesnake now is aware of us. I had to get fairly close. We're only 19 away now. So I'm not sure exactly what square he started to figure out where we were at, but he now can see us. He's still ignoring us. If we leave him alone, he'll leave us alone. So he's neutral, essentially. The zombie at 40 northeast still can't see us. So let's move northeast a little ways. And you can kind of see how far. That's where he's at on my mini-map. I'm in the center here. So he still can't see me this far out. We'll check our list again. Rattlesnake, yes. These three zombies cannot see us. The shady zombies are mostly blind during the daytime, so I'm not surprised about them not seeing me. I'll get a little closer. Still just the rattlesnake seeing us. And now I think I'm close enough. Yep. So we got a smoker zombie coming at us, as well as a standard zombie. So you can see now they have the exclamation points. They're marked as hostile. And you can see how far away they are in the direction. So that's how you're going to know. So if I start moving away now, you can tell from the mini-map those two zombies are chasing me. So they're coming right at me. And that's fine. So that's the primary sight methods that you have to worry about. Now, the next thing I want to mention is what about nighttime? Well, a really big advantage, especially for new players, is to take the night vision trait when you're creating your character. It's incredibly useful, incredibly powerful for survival in the early game. 
you actually want to do a lot of your raiding and scavenging during the night time, and I'll show you why. Um, I think what I'm going to do... I don't want to deal with that smoker zombie during the uh, tutorial here, so let's go kill him. <laughs> we will... There we go. Kill all the monsters. Alright, so he exploded, the rattlesnake exploded, and the zombie exploded. So everybody exploded. I'm going to move back towards the shelter for a moment. And we'll talk about nighttime. So, the reason the night vision perk is really valuable is because at night... Zombies, which are most the most common thing you're going to face, are essentially blind. They can only see one space away during the nighttime. So their primary sense to locate you is severely cut off. Now they do have other senses, which I'll talk about in a minute, but for sight purposes, which is the first way that they try to detect you, they can only see one space away. So with night vision perk, you can actually see a lot farther than that in the darkness, and that allows you to approach fairly close to them, but not have them figure out where you're at. So you can actually sneak around and lose monsters fairly easily during the nighttime. So it makes night raiding into towns much, much more survival early game. Survivable early game. So here's what I mean. So if we bring up the uh, debug menu, and let's change... Uh... Forgot. There it is. Change time. Let's make it our. Oops. Make it our twenty-two. Quit. All right. So now it's night time. So we've made it ten o'clock at night. It's very dark where we're at. So you can see the spaces around me. I can see one, two, three spaces out from my current position. Now, if I go to the debug again, and I am going to mutate, and I'm going to give myself the night vision trait. Okay. It expands the view out another space, and that's actually really powerful, really important. So it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's pretty big. Also, we've got a bit of a full moon out right now, so... The full moon is actually aiding my normal night vision. It's a little brighter out here than it would be normally. So usually, you're, without night vision, your vision's cut off to, I think, two squares? I can't remember now, but it's, it's pretty short. So we're getting a bit of a boost from the moonlight as well as our night vision. But we can see four squares out. Zombies can only see one square out. And that gives us enough room to maneuver around zombies. So let's go ahead and summon one and kind of dance around a bit and see just what happens. So if we bring up this, and we're going to spawn a monster, just a regular zombie. Don't think I did it right. Spawn monster. Find zombie right there. All right, I'm going to spawn the zombie right up there. All right, so we got a zombie now. If we check our list, right there, he knows where we are. So if we... Whoops, hello. <laughs> I'm going to turn run mode on, and we'll kind of dance around here until we lose him a bit. And then we'll wait. Oh, where'd the spitter come from? Oh, I think I accidentally spawned the spitter. <laughs> That's fine. So you can see, they're having a hard time keeping track of me right now. So it's a lot easier to move around at nighttime. So the spitter zombie now has no idea where I'm at. As soon as I moved out of its sight range, it's not able to find me again. As soon as I moved out of that zombie's range, I'm just sitting here passing turns. Oh, he finally figured out where I was again. We'll move away a bit, and then we'll wait again. Now, part of what's happening here is going to be the next topic I'm about to raise, the reason they're able to come towards me. But as you can see right now, I'm just passing time. Nothing's coming at me. So it makes it very, very much easier to survive at night. Basically, wait till nighttime, then go into towns and cities to do your raiding um, in the buildings. So that leads me to the next topic, really. So there are two other primary senses that the zombies use. So other than sight, the next one that they rely on is going to be sound. So you have a sound indicator on your screen right here, sound 4. 
What that indicates is, whatever last action you took generates an amount of sound. And the number indicates how far away that sound propagates. So if it's a sound of four, whatever thing you just did is going to make a noise that can be heard four spaces away. That's what was causing those guys to be able to see me. I was making a little bit too much noise, and they were able to locate me via sound as opposed to via sight. So they can only see about one square away. But because I was moving slowly, they were able to hear me and move towards me. So the different things you can do will have different levels of noise. And I'm going to give you an example here in just a second and explain some of the mechanics. So if I step outside here, nothing is currently coming towards me. Nothing knows where I'm at. I'm being relatively quiet. You can see with my current ground condition and shoes and so on, it's only sound four. So unless something happens to be within that range, they're not likely to know I'm here. But let's fire off our Tommy gun and see what happens. So if we do fire and just pick a direction, watch the number where it says sound. 94. One shot from a Tommy gun. 94 sound. Yes, that means any zombie within 94 squares out from my current location can potentially hear that noise. And they're going to start to come towards it to investigate. Now, at that extreme range, it's possible if something is exactly 94, they'll just ignore it. So there is some variance and there's some math involved. But for a general rule of thumb, it's true that if you make a sound, whatever that number is, that's how many squares away in, an, a, in a, a diameter that they can hear you. So 94 squares, or I'm sorry, in a radius. So 94 squares in every direction around me, there's this huge square of noise that just got heard. Now how persistent the zombies are to come and pursue that sound is going to be based on the difference between their range and the uh, loudness of the noise. So for example, if I fire a gun and it makes a sound of 100, that means that the sound is going to travel outward to 100 spaces. If a zombie is at 90 spaces, then the difference between the two numbers, 100 minus 90 is 10, means that that zombie is going to move 10 spaces towards that sound in order to investigate the noise. So if the zombie is 50 spaces away from me and I make a sound 100, he's going to move 50 spaces towards the source of the noise, meaning he's going to come all the way right up to next to me in order to investigate that sound. Now if I don't move, if I just stand here, everything's going to come towards the source of the noise within that space and find me. So. The louder the noise and the closer the zombie, the more likely it is that he's actually going to pursue that noise all the way up to wherever that sound originated from. So if you're making a lot of noise with weapons or whatever you're doing, you want to leave if you think there might be zombies in the area. Don't stay in that same place. So if I pass time now, I should see a couple of zombies show up here eventually. We had a spitter and we had the uh, standard zombie nearby. There he is. So Spitter has located us. He's coming right towards where he heard that sound, and there's the other zombie. So they had no idea where I was at. They were probably a good 20 squares away when I fired the gun off. And all they're doing is following the source of the noise. Once they got close enough, they then spotted me, and they're coming at me. So now it's nighttime still, so if I get out of that area... <laughs> zombie just dissolved in the acid the other guy put out. I'm going to move back to run mode. And we'll get away from him, get around the corner here. And we're only making sound four. So as soon as I get more than four spaces away and out of his sight range, he no longer knows where I'm at. So I would have to move towards him in order for him to find me. Now they do randomly wander around, so it's possible he'll randomly wander this direction and spot me again. But otherwise, I've lost him again. He's probably only a couple of squares above this area here, but he can't see me. So if I move up towards him... Unfortunately, with four noise, he's going to spot me as soon as I get close enough to see him myself. So I can see him, he can see me, because I'm making four noise. One, two, three, four squares. He's going to know I'm here. If I could manage to get my sound down to one or two, then he wouldn't even know I'm here. So very important to pay attention to that. It can be really critical for doing sneaky things when you're wandering through towns. If you're very quiet about it, you can actually wander literally right up next to things almost. You don't want to get within the one square range, but you can get two to three squares away and sneak right around things. So as long as you know about how that mechanic works. So that pretty much covers the sight and sound portions. The last one I want to mention is smell. This is their 
third and least used way of detecting you. And it's kind of hard to describe. I can't really demonstrate it on screen. But essentially what happens is you have a scent cloud that follows you around. So when you're moving into a new location and you keep moving, the scent cloud is fairly dispersed. And it won't really affect the zombies being able to, effect, to detect you. But if you stay in a location, the scent cloud disperses in the area around you and gets stronger as time goes by. So there's kind of a scent cloud area that will get larger and larger and increase its potency as more time passes and you stay in the same location. So that's another reason these guys might be able to figure out where I'm at, because I've been near this base for a while now, and so the scent cloud has built up enough that they could figure out that I'm here. So, like I said, it's a little hard to demonstrate, but just be aware that it is a factor that uh, if you're wanting to avoid things coming towards you, try not to stick around in one area for too long. Move around, um, because that scent cloud will build up, and I don't know the exact ranges that it might affect or those kinds of numbers, but it is a factor. But very much the primary methods are going to be sight and sound that you're going to have to worry about. So I think that will cover it for this particular course. I hope you found the information helpful. It's very useful to know exactly how these mechanics work. You can really get some cool things done once you realize and understand how that sound and sight operate. Um, so I hope you uh, take this into your adventures and use it well. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask either in the comments below or on the Discord channel. I've got linked to my social media contacts. Uh, do give me feedback if you could. Let me know how I'm doing, how the course or the channels are doing and such. That uh, would be the best way to help me grow and help me learn. And I look forward to hearing from you. So hope to see you in the next course. And have a great day.